we're going to start it. So this talk is about pretty websites and just making your website look better, look pretty. Um, not like 90s websites. Well, 90s websites were cool in their own right. What about 2000? 2000 was okay. 2000 websites. It's all right, kind of. So, um, yeah, um, this is an open talk. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions or any cool websites that you'd like to show off, let me know. Um, so I just want to start off with like, like saying what I did with my website. I, mean, I don't really consider my website really pretty or anything like that, but like there is some pretty cool stuff that I like in my website. Oh, can we turn the lights off so we can see the screen better? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll just I'll turn just the lights off. Flip them. Cool. I got it right. <laughs> nice. Yeah. All right, sorry. It's all right. So right now my website is using this uh, Bootstrap, but there are some um, custom um, CSS styles rules that I have in here. That for for example, like if you hover over my little logo picture. The uh, borders of it, the wrong, like more. So I think that's pretty cool. That's like a little cool, subtle element to my website that gives it like some character, you know. Nice. Um, this is a, a simple bar right here. Um, and my website. Oh, another cool thing about my website is that uh, I like the domain name and I like the. So I have like dark dark field site is like forward slash dot dot dot. So I can have like links to different um, like. Uh, like uh, other pages that like describe me, so like it'd be like dark field side is an educator, and I just have educator right here. And another cool thing about my website is that um, I have these are actually uh, when you click on the image of the, these images, uh, when, you, when you hover over them, they they like they kind of like light up, and that's just changing like the uh, opacity or um, the hue of them mm -hmm. when I hover over them. And like if you click on it, it brings up a modal, and I like, got cool um, animations for like a slideshow of different images. And I get I get a lot of my <coughs> inspiration for like cool effects of my website from um, from like Instagram posts like this one, like We Love Web Design, and they post a lot of um, designers like mock up the web websites and I I have like a projects folder where I try to mimic these uh, these mock-ups. Mm -hmm. I noticed that a lot of them have like a lot of like floaty elements and like overlays of images. I kind of think that's a bit overdone these days. Mm -hmm. um, another cool website that I love, I actually really love this website, it's called um, Code yeah, code drops, but like the URL, the actual yeah. URL is out. It's kind of hard to pronounce. But code drops, if you, if you like just Google code drops, you can find a bunch of different tutorials on like cool um, CSS um, effects that you can that you can uh, use. I love I love this bitch effect right here. You can like view the, the demo of it. I think this. These little effects give your your website some character, you know. It's like I feel like websites should be like living magazines, pretty much. So a lot of these uh, these these cool uh, effects use like um, uh, what is it? It's called clip is it clip art. It's not clip art. It's called clip clip path. path. Clip path. Yes. A lot of them use clip path and like just a bunch of clip paths to create these like all uh, these little um, glitch effects. That you see right here. Are these kind of effects? Do they work on mobile or not? Yeah, they work on mobile. Mm -hmm. A lot of um. What you see here is um, supported by a lot of browsers. Um, what I haven't gotten into um, right now, but I want to get into, is uh, like using animated um, S SVGs, and that can give you a, a lot of freedom of what you can do. Cool one. 
Dave Oren is coming up. This is my favorite one right here. It's like, yeah, it like has a, just another layer of a map and like the circle like points to like different like locations on the map. That's a pretty cool one. I like that one. And so, um, a lot of like, so like clip, using like SVGs is pretty, uh, I, I guess you could say it's like more advanced and like figuring out um, how to type of all the, all the like the paths for the uh, SVG, kind of advanced. So um, you can just like go to W3 schools to look out like some simple ways to like add those like little animations that I made on my on my account, on my on my um website, like this little cover effect with the border radius. Um you just go to W three schools. They have a bunch of uh different uh examples of like cool cool little things like this that you can use to you hover over it that'll make your button get bit, grow bigger or that could be an image if you wanted to if you wanted to use it. You have delays and um, transitions and the transitions. Overlay uh, buttons, you want images. Pretty simple. Make sure your um, container is like in a relative position and then you put the button in absolute. Really simple stuff like that. Um, what was I going to say? So yeah, and like sh using like shadows on your buttons when you hover over them. That's that's another cool effect that you can give character to your website. So yeah, do you guys have anything to add? Another cool website that I like to go to is uh, CSS Tricks. These have a bunch of um, different cool uh, tutorials on a lot of more advanced um, CSS tricks, I guess you could say. Dash tricks .com. And they have a gallery of like really cool websites that you can take a look at. This is CSS tricks? Yeah, CSS dash tricks. I mean, if you like interesting transitions between pages, you can check out include.com, N-C-L-U-D. Yeah. So they're an agency in DC and they do this weird glitchy transition thing. So once the page loads, they have their little banner cool. featured image and if you move your mouse, it, oh, yeah. it does this weird. Oh, interesting. And then if you click on any of those pages, it'll transition with this weird. Wow. Oh, wow. Like that. That's, That's interesting. So. I saw this really cool one on um, cold drops. Where, like, if you. Um, Wait, are they a design firm or a creative agency? I, I missed uh, what you said. Creative agency, I think. Yeah. I don't know how to classify it. We can be wrong. I just wanted to write down. They're, uh, they're includes interesting stuff. I'm looking for this site that um, I really thought was cool. I made a post about it on my Facebook account. I'm trying to look for it real quick. Um, if you guys have any other websites that you would like to mention, let me know. What do you, th I mean, I, it seems like if you go really, really aggressive with CSS, there are also some limitations, right? I mean, like what? Well, because I've seen that you can do some really, really impressive stuff with CSS, especially if you use like CSS counters and stuff like that. So it's not that, I guess, some of these techniques you showed, it seemed to be really like moving really fast. It didn't seem to be that taxing. No, and that's. I guess I think, so. Yeah. I guess they're less by nature. They're easier to execute. 
smoothly than, like, say, media, plain bite media. Like, right. just like a video file? Or? Right. I mean, I'm just wondering, I threw some really cool stuff, but I, I mean, thinking in terms of me wanting to use some of those things myself, I worry that some of them would so browsers, gum up the works. It depends on how you do it, but yeah. browsers have optimized a lot of CSS animation stuff mm. to work on and utilize your GPU. So if you have sort of modernish hardware that has a separate GPU or has at least a powerful enough GPU, you know, you're going to get a lot of these effects that don't drop frames that aren't skippy and laggy. But there's also ways where if you animate it a certain way, it doesn't utilize your GPU, and then it uses the CPU, and then it could get laggy. Right. Because it's using the same thread as the page you're currently looking at and stuff. Yeah, um, Google has, um, I think, a, a pretty yeah. decent write-up on, like, using CSS, like, when you should use CSS versus when you should use, like, um, the web ed animation API. And it kind of... Basically, talks about like um, it depends on like what what are you what you what are you doing exactly like if you make some messing with like um, if you're messing with certain threads of the CP, um, that the certain threads that the browser is using. Yeah, so I mean. If you can get away with it, you want to do CSS animation mm -hmm. and not JavaScript animation. Um, or probably the best of both worlds is you use JavaScript to kick off and trigger right. CSS animation. Yeah, here's a good site that um that gives you the breakdown of like um yeah. I didn't get the uh, copy that link fast enough. Oh, sorry. The, the previous one, it's just like the animation performance. Okay, I'll find it. I'll find it. Go go ahead. Keep going. Uh, CSSTriggers.com gives you a layout of like what um, CSS properties triggers what in the, inside of the browser. So you so there's like the layout, um, paint, and like compositing that the browser does. Oh yeah, that's pretty useful. I never knew about that. Yeah, you don't want to trigger layout because then the browser has to recalculate right. stuff and that slows things down. Okay, now you know it has the three, the three bars, top to bottom. Is the like the top is layout? That's the most intensive, and then is composite the least expensive? Yeah, so layout is the most expensive. You don't want to trigger layout. Um, yeah, I mean ideally you don't want to trigger any of these things, but painting is. Um, yeah, painting would be a second most, I would say. Okay, so it's makes. kind of you can kind of see those things as like a meter. The lower yeah. the meter, the easier right. it is, the yeah. fuller it is, the more expensive it is. I mean, yeah, it depends, but yeah. Yeah. For the most part, that's that's right. Okay, cool. Another, of course, another great website that you guys can uh, check out is uh, codepen.com, and just, just explore Codepen to look like really cool. Um, like CSS animations and a bunch of different things really. You can do that. You can even have examples of like WebGL type things. Yeah, I really like uh, CodePen. Um, I used CodePen to be able to figure out confetti. So for New Year's oh. Eve, I wanted to have confetti drop on my website. Uh -huh. um, and so uh, from uh, New Year's Eve to the 2nd of January, of any year now. If you visit my website on those three days, confetti drops from the ceiling. But I was able to figure the CSS out from a code pen. Cool. I'm not sure. This is just like, this is this, so this image right here, which is completely made out of CSS, which is oh. kind of amazing. This image right here. That's cool. Yeah. I saw a talk. Um, a few weeks ago, where this guy was talking about uh, uh, creating um, like rich emails, and at the end of the talk, he demonstrated that he he um, he he built Wolfenstein in like an email. You just using like CSS. I thought that was amazing because like you, I don't think you can you can't run like JavaScript inside of an email, right? So, oh, yeah. definitely not. Yeah. 
And even the CSS is limited, so that's pretty yeah, amazing he's, he's able yeah. to do that. Uh, he said that he's using like, like a lot of like CSS counters and radio buttons. Yeah, it's on Copad. I have the link. If you Google Wolfenstein 3D, <laughs> I could at least make it shoot. Oh, I don't know what to do. Uh, well, it works when I click the thing, it shoots. Oh, I gotta use these things. Alright, I get it. You can't, like, use your keyboard. Remember your name? Eddie. Oh, Eddie. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> There's a cool bug. Oh, never mind. It's actually how it's supposed to be. What's going on? It's E-N. Wolf E-N. Stein. Yeah. It's by M.J. Robin. Chat. I can just post it to the chat. It's a random link. Oh, not that. I guess I can just post it there too. Oh, that's strange. That's really outdated. Oh, am I on the right one? Yeah. But here's. Here you go. Refresh. Huh. Yeah, it's showing up for me. Oh, um, yeah, oh, it's like lowercase p, lowercase w, I guess. I don't know. That shouldn't affect it, but. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. All right. Oops. Anyway, there that there is. Really blown away when I saw this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's just so much you can do with CSS now. Yeah, right? and it's so much easier than it used to be. And the crazy thing no about idea. it is like, I don't see a, like a lot of like mainstream sites using these techniques. Even though, I mean, like they don't take up a lot of resources and slow down the user experience a lot. But like, I feel like a lot of like websites like uh, Facebook kind of like stuck. At least in like the 2000s, that design aspect. Well, there's a lot of yeah. things where it's like you can add all these effects, but do they add something to what you're trying to do? I think they do. I think they add. I think they add something to like the user experience overall. Well, like even if you had a simple like that glitch thing on that include site. So, if you're Facebook and you're really focused on keeping people on Facebook and not getting bored. Right. And every time that happened, it would have this weird, like, one to three second transition. Yeah. Would that increase people who would then abandon their site? <laughs> but I think it would make sense for like places like Amazon. So like, what if this like this like it's like jumbotron or hero image right here yeah. has some type of effect <coughs> to it? You know, I think that would be cool. That's really fun. Yeah, yeah. it's just like a basic slide show. That's awesome. That's really. Amazing. There's also the cloth demo, which is mm. everyone talks about the WebGL. Cloth demo. Yeah. So there's this code pen. Here, I'll just post that too. What is code pen? So you know how you're, you're just like messing around with something um, and you don't want to like make a new, um, it's just like a way where you have three columns, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and you just put it in there and it, as you type, it updates the preview window below it. I mean, is it a service? Is it like, just yeah. yeah, it's hosted. It's hosted. Service. Yeah. It's just like, like JS bin or like yeah. these type of okay. sites where you, and then people, you know, write stuff about them and share it. And it's just kind of like a collection of little, little random front end things. But you can also host websites on it now because they do projects. So here's the cloth demo, which is in the chat, which everyone likes. I mean, it's using WebGL, but. Another cool thing is not related. Well, it's not. It doesn't use um, CSS, but uh, it uses WebGL. It's called um, A Frame, and that allows you to like create uh, 
three D objects within uh, um, within your browser, and <clears throat> it's like a framework that um, sorry, it's like a framework that's similar to um, similar to just typing out HTML. <laughs> so this is another thing that could make your website stand out by using like, by integrating three D objects into your website. You can also create VR experiences using A frame. It also works on mobile. Yeah. You can make a 3D gallery, photo gallery, like where you And you sure could have, and through. people spent a lot of money, and all that is gone. And it's all gone and equated, and no one even knows what I'm talking about, except some people who are now in Micromedia Director with there, there are all these you know, artists who are hiring, they, they have to hire people to recreate all these interactive pieces mm -hmm. from the early 2000s. Yeah. Because they're. There's just no tools to play back. Yeah, I mean, I had a friend who works at the Smithsonian, and they have a bunch of art stuff that's done in Flash, and that's kind of going away. Mm -hmm. They have to save it because it's history, but well, the Well, so that's a question. Fun. So is CSS more archival, if you will? I mean, like, I would imagine that yeah. these techniques should oh, last yeah, longer. Oh, yes, CSS, yeah, I mean... Because they're never going to, I mean, it would take, you know, one of the things about HTML and CSS is that, like, historical properties aren't going to be, like, aren't going to have breaking changes. Mm -hmm. So any web browser in 10 years should, even if there's new CSS methods that are better, like, it should respect the old CSS methods, mm -hmm. you know, and CSS can just be a file. So, I mean, it's, you know, super archivable. Sort of. There are things that they've depreciated like frames are going away. I had a use really? case where I actually needed to use a frame and it didn't work because HTML5 depreciated frame. So I had to like recreate it in JavaScript mm. in an iframe. Um, but yeah, in theory it should be more because CSS is an open spec. So if I ever, right. if all the browsers stopped using CSS, the spec is there and you can go and recreate it. That's true. Like you don't need a plugin to run it. Versus a proprietary thing like a flash binary. Right. Have, which is a lot harder to reverse engineer and decompile. But I don't think there's anything inherently more that makes CSS more archivable. It's just more supported now. Like in a hundred years, are we still going to be writing CSS and dealing with websites at all? You know. Yeah, maybe in a hundred years not. Right. But yeah, I think you know. There's so many people using CSS as opposed to, like, I mean, I know there's a lot of Flash, but, like, CSS is so de facto, even more than Flash ever was. Like, because Flash was, like, an upgrade thing that people, like, it was a hot thing that a lot of people did, but it wasn't, like, de facto. And it's, like, every website on the face of the surf uses CSS right now. So. We'll go back in time and replace CSS and HTML and websites with CD-ROMs and interactive content. Everyone will have a CD-ROM drive, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, things do change <laughs> over time. Yeah. So just the fact that, yeah, CSS has lasted like 20 years doesn't mean it's necessarily going to be around another 20 years. You know, there's a lot yeah. of people, a lot of people worry about this where they'll even save old hardware of the era because, yeah. um, Viewing something that was designed for an 800 by 600 CRT monitor is a lot different than trying to view it now mm. on your HD or 4K screen. screen. <laughs> yeah, so like your 800 600 thing will be this tiny thing up in the corner, and even like CPU speeds. So like our CPUs are so much faster. Pete, I, I was thinking about a specific project. I was mentioning people recreating their director projects. Um, 
there was a, a friend who made it. Uh, he, he's a he's a filmmaker, he's a buzzer, uh, Phil Niblock, and he had done this piece. But he wanted the recreating of some of these very directory transition effects. Yeah. And it proved incredibly difficult to recreate them. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, the, the libraries that were used for some of those patterns that were designed to deal with, like, limitations uh, and, and specific, like, yeah. pixel frames. So that was the most expensive and difficult thing. It's also, it's also the most ugly part of the whole project. Mm -hmm. But it's but his attitude was, well, the piece is done. We're not recreating the piece. We're just trying to archive it. Yeah. And so we're going to have to do that. So he paid, uh, I mean, like, like the, the budget, like more than... 75% of the budget went into the, these ugly transition effects that he just, he just wanted to try to get, just had to be spot on yeah. because the museum had accessioned it and yeah. that was it. <laughs> and it was, of course, you know, just a, like, a weird, like, defaulty, just crappy transition option from the director. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This was on what? What was this? Uh, let's see if I have... Uh, it, was, it was a... A type of transition uh, between two images in director that was just sort of like a simple, like. I've never heard of director. You wouldn't need to worry about it anymore. <laughs> it's how it's interactive CD media ROMs. for like CD ROMs oh. was done. Yeah. So, As you look yeah. at your laptop and you're like, there's no CD ROMs there. <laughs> yeah. So you used to be only to do this cool stuff, you'd have to do interactive CD ROMs, and everyone had interactive CD ROMs. I have a portfolio as an interactive CD-ROM that's just collecting <laughs> stuff, but yeah. now you can just do it on the web. Yeah. And before, the web was like a lot harder to do what you have in mind. A lot, so, like, a lot of like, um, I guess obviously, but like a lot of like audio CDs had a direct CD-ROM mm -hmm. stuff on it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you'll, in 20 years, you'll look back and say, why can't we just do it with CSS now? And there'll be some newfangled weird thing that the people do. <laughs> we'll just look back and be like, back then we did it with CSS, and this is how you did it. So, do you guys see anything in the, that might that might overtake CSS right now? Or? Well, I, I'm I'm still coming from JavaScript being a cool thing to check out to seeing your good suggestions about CSS. So. Yeah. You, don't ask me. <laughs> well, I mean, like, of course, CSS is going to overtake the JavaScript or anything like that. But um, I was just like wondering, like, you played like, around with P five? A little bit, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess it's probably not in the direction of efficient, but I've seen some really just cool uses of that. Mm -hmm. That, as far as like my engagement with the web, it just seems like a really cool thing to do. Um, it's for, like, is P5 like processing? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's it's rebuilt for Java. It's a JavaScript okay. uh, variant, and it's it's a uh, not the Java video focus, interactive video focus. Yeah. Um, but the let's see here. Yeah, I see. Uh, a lot of interactive live video. Uh, and compositing, like on the fly compositing stuff, which I mean, it's cool. I mean, some of it is silly, like it, some of it's not very graceful, but sure. that it works as smoothly as it does, uh, and and you can you can build this stuff. You have complete control of building it and making every element interactive. But like, I think you kind of need like Dan Schiffman, like as a performer in there being goofy. So that for, you, you forgive any sort of glitch possible. He has more enthusiasm than other humans. Sure. I mean, like, P5 is cool, and, like, that's the, using JavaScript happens to advantages, but, like, overall, I think, I mean, P, I think uh, CSI, I mean, uh, CSS3 takes over for the most part. Of, like, it making seems simple to be. Things, but, like, like that, yeah. I mean, but, could you do these kind of effects with CSS easily and efficiently? Like, like yeah. what kind of effects? So okay, so this is example. I'm just I'm showing yeah. the some of the, the early P5 uh, JavaScript stuff. So this is Dan Shipman who was you know 
creator of processing, and he's really, really focused on P5 and some other stuff after this. So he, it was a way for him to work with live, like taking video and doing, like creating a grammar for how you can do interactive uses of this on the web. So like this is him up against the green screen, but he's able to do all these other live things and constantly change how you interact with it. And it runs pretty smoothly, even though pretty wimpy. But it's it's um it's all like HTML5 stuff, I think, yeah. essentially. So that stuff is in the video, or no? That stuff is. <laughs> And then do stuff. Yeah. So sure. But is this not the way of the future? This thing I haven't caught up to yet that came out three define years ago. Define the future. Define. I mean, define like. I mean, does, is this promising territory for me to spend some time investigating? I think CSS three is probably yeah. the primary way forward for animations, and Great. because with CSS you're able to do a lot of the graph, like they build in can build in support to the graphics card and stuff like to do hardware acceleration, and so you can get smoother uh, than like the dynamic code of JavaScript and stuff. Yeah. Um, so I think the hardware acceleration is a big. I'm gonna say you have to. You're probably gonna have to use both depending on what it is you're trying to do. Oh yeah, definitely. You, you know? can't do everything, but I think yeah. doing everything you can first in CSS and then using JavaScript to kind of fill in the missing gaps. Definitely it is good, you know. I mean, because you, you can do effects and stuff. I mean, I ended up scrapping it, but one part of my website redesign I was doing was um, I do check ins with Swarm like Aaron, and so I had my last scene on the page, and I grabbed the map, and then I wrapped it into like a sphere where it looked 3D, um, and then it rolled in. So when you got to the website, the earth rolled in, and I actually had like the um, positioning of the map on the sphere <laughs> rotate so it looked like the earth was like sliding in and right. rotating and then it would stop with the little pin on the spot of the map that um, I last checked in at. Um, it ended up being too gaudy. I didn't like it. It was just too <laughs> much. But, um, but it, it was possible. You know, and that was yeah. all doing CSS. That is cool. So P5 is great for stuff like this, like using a webcam and like transforming the video. Oh yeah, definitely. That's good. I mean, that's just HTML5, so, or HTML5 API. Oh, yeah, P5 yeah. will smooth it over, yeah. yeah. yeah I think the, the exciting thing about P5 is not, it's not just that you can process the video, it's that you can do all the other layers interact with it, right? I mean, it's a, yeah, it, it's basically like a library that smooths over interacting with different elements to do different things. Oh, cool. That's great. Yeah. Where, where is the, where would you suggest somebody start? Among all these various links, to see what is sort of the leading thinking on CSS3 and animation. The, I think the simplest way is really, um, I would say. Just spend time looking at examples and code things? Uh, well, if you want, right. if, like, if you're just getting into it, like, I would look at CSS. Um, I mean, WD schools and just look at yeah. CSS3 examples and the basic yeah. CSS stuff and start from there and then see what you can. Then see what you can recreate, like looking at um, these these designers' mockups. Give ten minutes. Stuff like that. I always found it to have some type of goal or yeah. thing you want to do in mind, yeah. and then work backwards and figure out how to get there. Mm -hmm. Instead yeah. of just like I'm going to read the entire CSS3 spec, and now I know it. Yeah. You know. Because that's, that's nobody's I'm, ever done that. And that's where these like these <laughs> it doesn't work for me. 
some of these cool artist renders come up, and I, uh, you can like try your best to recreate this. Yeah. Like, did you find yeah, that yeah, process of trying to recreate yeah. really so, stressy? Yeah, because yeah. like it forced me to figure out how to do it. Yeah. 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 I've seen a lot of success with people doing it that way. When they're trying to learn something, it's just to copy what something that they see. Mm -hmm. Play around with it. But yeah, like. I wanted to have this talk because I just find most websites really boring. <laughs> <laughs> like even even um, like GitHub has a pretty cool effect. Right, it's something like super simple, like this right here. Um, wait, not that. That's not it. Uh, let me go to my thing. Are you talking about when it? Pops up with the different um, yeah. language names. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I think you have to like just hover the mouse right over the colored bar. Right. That's it. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, it's like a little scroll yeah. up and thing. Like that's simple. Yeah. 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 I really like that. Yeah, I think animations are most effective when they're simple and mm -hmm. unobtrusive. Mm -hmm. Unless you're trying to do something where you really need to grab someone's attention. I mean, like, here's an example of a site that I work on at work, is if you go to the incline.com, so we're a local news startup. The incline. I don't know what the incline is. That'd be interesting to find out. Yeah. So we're a news site. This one's based in Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh, there's a thing called the incline, which is, like, what that logo is. There's a, it's a famous thing. So if you go to the top, if you notice the header, there's a slight incline, which is actually the yeah, same that's cool. degree as, so all the all the border edges have that, like, I think it's 33 degrees. It's yeah, it's 33 nice. degree incline, which is the same degree as the incline oh, wow. on the actual. It's, it's subtle, but it really brings it together. Yeah. yeah. So that was kind of a neat touch, and it has it there on that event thing, the attend the 20th annual thing, yeah. And you just, like, manipulating the border, right? Yeah, there's, um, I didn't actually build this one, but it, um, essentially what you do is you make a shape and you make the shape go slightly above whatever the top of the element is, and that shape you can skew, and then you hide the other sides of it. So there's a way where you can do this kind of like diagonal line. Yeah, actually, um... So like imagine taking a, a square or a rectangle and then rotating a little bit and then pulling it down a little bit to oh. accentuate it. So okay. that's what makes the. <laughs> yeah, similarly, um, if you go to miklb.com. Yeah. Um, this is Michael Bishop. He's one of the guys on the indie web. And, um, like, I loved the fact that he had the gray, like, you know, uh, diagonal bar. And then when you scroll down to his notes section, and there's another white to gray, and it has the diagonal bar. Um, and I loved that when I saw it, because it felt like it wasn't just a boxy website. Um, I also really like his timeline dots on the left during the notes section. Yeah, exactly. Is this Michael Bishop, you said? Yeah, Michael Bishop. Do you guys think um, VR or AR is going to affect the web any, anyhow? I know there's like a VR API, web VR API. Uh, I think it'll be useful for some applications, but I don't think it's like going to be something that like replaces the web. Like the web will be, it'll be like a subset of the web, I think. Well, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think it's going like, to replace the web. I, well, I think that AR is going to change shopping tremendously. Sure, yeah. Mm. And and that, that, I think that really will change behaviors. Like, like, a, the like key AR more insists on a certain context. Yeah, the key ingredient is we're, we're missing something that's like, 
like, I don't know, like, ten years ago, you never thought you'd just constantly be staring at this phone in your pocket, right? Yeah. This glass, glass screen. So we need something. The, the trick with AR is that you'll need some type of device to augment your reality, your vision. So, like, there has to be some type of device that's always on. It's not something you just pull up, and then you're experiencing AR stuff. Yeah. Like, it needs to be part of life where it's normal, well, where you're, like, always wearing, like, Google Glass or something like that. Like all the like that. IKEA stuff now, um, and some of the upcoming, like, real estate elements. Well, it, it's not about necessarily, like, the, the, the idea of the, the overlays in Google Glass, but it's about being able to, to be like, oh, okay, we're here. You know, I can like. I can augment this and see data layers here yeah. Yeah. as yeah. I want it, not like this is my experience is having to do both yeah. of these things. I definitely think that. I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of startups, yeah. and and the and it's, it's being raced into retail mm -hmm. so aggressively. I definitely think that um, we have the I think the web yeah. technology is going to drive those those type of interactions, like like using CSS. And I mean, would, you, would you use CSS for overlays in augmented reality? I haven't, I haven't really touched. Um, I mean, I. That's a, oh yeah, that's a good point. But I. Most people I, are using, I guess. I think they're using like some type of Unity, um, Unity, Unity app. Yeah. So yeah, I think. But I think. I think that. Uh, I think the web will catch on and, and will replace that. I mean, with web VR, it'd be so much more accessible to have yeah. people who are already writing web technologies to be able to do the 3D interactive VR. Exactly. Applications. I guess there's some frustration. Things like Air Kit, Kit and VR Kit, which are really powerful, apparently they're very siloed. It's, and well, yeah, it's, it's very it's, difficult it's to, like to connect into the... like the app versus website thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But so if the web cat caught up and could do everything AR Kit could do, but now you have the power of the web and you can link to things and you can just distribute it in one place to many different devices. There is this thing called web... AR and kind of, kind of does something. It uses markers though. So, Thing about this is that um, one one great thing about this is that it works on like low powered phones as well. The only problem is that you need to use markers. Yeah, so it can orient itself. But if we can like somehow incorporate. And also, this is also just like a locked up shot. Yeah, true. So not to <laughs> be overly critical, but yeah. I could have sworn I saw one where like the There's one camera. Yeah, one But yeah, but if we could, like get the algorithms where like the camera can, the camera can like find the surface Oops. of a yeah that one's moving. You can press OK. What's uh one Counterintuitive, but really handy thing you found in your attempts to recreate those sites in CSS. Handy thing. Yeah, things that you you found useful that you wouldn't have guessed before you really went through that process. Like maybe stacking order, like where to, where to start, try to do some of those attacks, things like that. Anything that might be of interest to somebody who's looking at it for the first time. Um, like I really just think, like uh, looking at these little CSS examples and then modifying them uh, to your liking, and then try to incorporate that into your website. Cool. Good start. Um, and I will use a I will use an editor that has like some type of 
live coding type of feature. Give a recommendation for I will use brackets. Huh? I use brackets. Oh yeah, brackets. All right, everybody. Thank you. I hope you got to a good stopping point. That is the end of our fourth session. We now have ten minutes okay. before the next session.